Well, my loyal viewers, today is the day. FLL Unearthed has finally been revealed along with the entire missions board. So today I will be giving you my reactions and analysis of this reveal, but feel free to let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Let's dig in. We are going to get right into things, skipping past the intro, because that's kind of base level knowledge. I hope you all understand at this point if you've done FLL before. Before the match if begins, not, we are going to get to right into this. Inspection and set all your equipment in place. So once again, your we're at a dual home format, which is kind of expected at this point. This is the third or fourth year we've had it. I'll Special skip tools past to it. Clean and our first mission that we get a glimpse at, the surface anything. brushing, is a bit of a doozy. A piece of this civilization's past. If soil deposits are completely cleared, touching the mat... So already we see that we've got two separate ways we can activate this by flipping this little lever back and forth. And this this sort of motion is most easily solved with some sort of one-way curtain attachment or something that can just kind of brush against it and knock it one way or another without necessarily like getting caught on it. But it's the second part that's a bit more tricky. Brush is not touching the dig site. You've got to take it back out. Now, luckily, you don't have to take it out to score all of the points. You can still score 20 points by knocking it back and forth. But that's a relatively small piece to try and grab. And unlike, you know, the trident piece from Submerged, you're just grabbing it straight up. You're not, like, pulling it out against something. So that's something that's going to be a little challenging, especially because the piece is moving back and forth. We're going to see how teams manage to conquer that one. Mission two. Moving on to Map mission reveal. number two. Archaeologists work to unearth important clues about how a civilization lived. This is another sort of three-part mission where you've got three separate map. things you have to if do. Topsoil sections are completely cleared. So this mission has three very different ways to solve it. You know, you've got sliding, you've got um, you know, you've got like twisting as you slide it, you've got sliding it straight. Um, but you've got to slide it far enough that this little piece falls down, I assume. That's probably going to be clarified in the robot game manual, which I do not currently have. And then you also have this um, hook thing, which can just be solved with like forklift or something of similar Mission power. Three. Mineshaft Explorer. And here we hit the Indiana Ariana Jones the themed uh, mission shared mission of this of season. And share what she finds with her team. I mean, the archaeologist's name is Iana. That's just Indiana missing a few letters, field. you know? Bonus. And if the opposing team's minecart is on your team's field. And here we hit something a little interesting, because FLL has really gone back and forth since they've introduced the shared missions. They've gone back and forth between mutually exclusive and mutually beneficial. And the mutually exclusive missions include, like, the bridge from City Shaper, even though I'm realizing as I'm saying this that most of my audience never did City Shaper because that was six years ago. Oh my gosh, now I feel old. Anyway... And you also have mutually beneficial shared missions like this one. And each of them kind of have their, their pros and their cons. The mutually exclusive shared missions, only one team can score the full points. So like the bridge for Gargo Connect, the submersible for Submerged, both of those have like one thing that one team can do. So the submersible can only be on one team's side. It can't be on both, you know? So only one team can score the full points. On the other hand, you have mutually beneficial shared missions like this one or the helicopter from Cargo Connect, where both teams can score the full points. However, as we'll see later in the video, this is actually a bit more in-depth than just that. Field. Mission four, careful recovery. This might when be one of the most tricky missions to score the humans, full points for, and you'll see why in just a second. To safely recover artifacts. If the precious artifact is not touching the mine, so that's fairly simple. It's a fairly easy 30 points. Yeah, it's a fairly small area you have to pull out from, but are standing. to get both of those structures still standing, let's go back and watch the like extraction process again. That's a very small area, and we see how easy it is for it to be knocked down. Now, I don't currently have a mat, but when, if I did, I would be able to test how it actually feels in person, but just mine. based on this video, it looks very if sensitive. So this could be one of the hardest 10 points in the whole game because you have to get that sample out of there to score the here? 10 points for the thing the to the thing still standing. A part of the village where people this is kind lived. of the gimme mission, sort of like the TV from if Super Powered or like the upright. unknown creature from Submerged, where it's just like, you know, a free 30 points for um, any team to go get. And I mean, it's a relatively satisfying freebie mission because it, it flips, it rotates, it looks kind of cool while you're doing it, which I appreciate. 
Mission six, forge. Ayana's team believes this forge was used to smelt ore and craft tools. Release the ore blocks and search carefully. This one is another relatively simple mission, but what is important to note is that if only one of these boulders actually has the artifact, which is important later in the video. And that means that your robot pretty much has to return home so you can like find the boulder with the artifact, or you can just dump them all in the forum, which we'll talk about a bit later in the video. So there's a few different ways to do this. And that's once again, a pretty simple 30 points. It's a little, little complicated from a scoring standpoint, mission but it's, it's nothing too hard. Now this mission, as soon as I saw it, it sort of gave me a, a sense of nostalgia because my very first season of FLL was uh, hydrodynamics. And that was eight years ago, which as I'm saying this, I realize is like next year, there are going to be kids in FLL who weren't even like born when I was competing in F FLL. This video is making me feel old, y'all, and I'm 17. This is this is bizarre. Anyway, there's this mission uh, that was similar to this where you had to like move, I believe it was manhole covers because the theme that you had to do with water transportation, unlike submerged where it's like exploration of the seas. So this this mission's kind of similar to that. It gives me a, a bit of nostalgia, Be which lifting. I'll always appreciate. This millstone enabled people to process grain and gives insight into their daily lives. Due to its size, moving this artifact could prove to be a challenge. If the millstone is not touching its base. And it seems like a, a fairly simple mission, but the problem is it's in a really, really awkward base. spot. You see this? There's like no way to grab that. So it's not that it's, you know, super heavy or anything like they're saying. It's that it's almost impossible to easily grab that, especially because the loop is not really aligned like with this opening here. So you can't just like stick a rod in there or something. This thing is going to be rather challenging to grab now that I'm thinking about it. And so robot size is going to be really important this year, even though it is a relatively open field. You're looking at some very, very tight spaces for attachment this artifact maneuvering. could prove to be a challenge. If the millstone is not touching its base. Mission eight, silo. Empty the silo of the preserved food so it can be analyzed at the lab. So I'm just going to give a warning to all the FLL coaches out there who have like nine or 10 year old boys on their teams, because as you will see, this mission will cause you a lot of pain. And it's for a very simple reason that will become abundantly clear as I play this video. If preserved pieces are outside the silo, anytime there are projectile Legos involved in FLL, you know, one of two things will happen. One, according to Murphy's law, your robot will get stuck on those at one point during your competition because what can happen will happen. Two, one of the kids on your team is gonna be obsessed with hitting this lever until it drives everyone else on the team absolutely batty. Let's be real, both of those are probably gonna happen at one point or another. Honestly, this mission's kind of fun though, and if I was still in FLL, this is, I, I would be that kid driving everyone absolutely crazy with this mission, so. Take that how you will. And it is a fun little 30 points, so we Mission always take nine. that. What's on sale? Restore the market stall and reveal items that were once traded between the village and its visitors. If the roof is completely raised, if the market wares are raised. So I'm gonna just point this out really quick. A lot of these missions seem like they're small missions kind of put together. So you're looking at one mission that has two separate mini missions put together. So you're able to score like 30 points with this mission, but it's through two separate activation methods. And this is where a game strategy is gonna be really important because it might not be optimal for your team to, you know, score both sections of this mission at once. And you don't actually have to, you could just flip up like the market stand, for example. You could just do that on one run. You could come back and score the other point at a different run or just like never flip up the wares. So there's a lot of different ways you can go about this. And so, that's something just a bit interesting to note, how there's a lot of small ways to Mission score across time. this board. Tip the scales. This ancient tool ensured that each item received a fair and balanced price. If the scale is tipped and touching the mat, if the This is just another example where it's a really removed. small, uh, dexterous mission where you have to have a robot that can really do a lot of mission unique, 11. smaller, simple Angler things artifacts. really well. It's a little interesting Your team that way. Has discovered some interesting art Angler artifact, is that like, is that a reference to the angler fish from FLL Submerged? And like the crane from City Shaper? And it's, it's, it's yellow like the, 
the changing shipping lanes and there's a trident. This is totally just submerged 2.0, guys. Someone grabbed my tinfoil hat. This is crazy. Artifacts Actually, no, I just, support. it makes sense that Use they're doing the crane this. to excavate the site. If artifacts are raised above the dig site, bonus. And if the crane flag is at least partly lowered. So this is, this is a bit of an interesting thing. Um, this is one of the few where it's not, you know, you can do either one individual. You have to do, you have to do both to get the 30 points. But doing that reciprocating motion six or seven times to actually get that basket all the way up is going to be rather challenging, um, especially because you really have to sit there for a while because if you try to move too quickly, like there was the step counter mission in replay, this ratchet system, if it's anything like that, can really have a tendency to get jammed, which is not the greatest when you're in the high pressure situation of a match. So that's something teams are going to have to really watch out for. Mission 12, salvage operation. An ancient ship discovered at the beach is at risk of further decay. Excavate the vessel without damaging its delicate structure. If the sand is completely cleared- This is just cleared, the shipwreck mission again, guys. I'm saying, submerged 2.0. If the ship is completely raised. Hmm. Mission 13, statue rebuild. This one really reminds me of the, the dinosaur from Superpower, I believe it was. Or maybe it was Cargo Connect. If the statue is completely raised. That's a really simple mission right there. Mission Just 14. A quick little one and forum. done. Deliver artifacts this is where to a lot forum. of complicated things come into play. Consider what the artifacts tell you and what mysteries remain. If an artifact is touching the map and is at least partly in the forum. So you've got a lot of those small pieces. This is similar to the research vessel from Submerged. But right here, you notice the minecart, right? Now, why is this important? It's because you can't actually score the minecart on your side of the field. You are reliant on your opponent to send their minecart over. And what's really interesting is because from a strategy standpoint, a lot of teams are going to wait till the last second to do their shared mission. And I can really reflect on this because my last season of FLL was Cargo Connect, where you had this big old helicopter mission with a package that it would drop. And you would score more points if you, like, if you both did the shared mission, but you know you could score more points if you moved that parcel from your opponent's drop into your like one of your circles. I think it was. I don't actually remember. That was years ago. So if your opponent waited till the last second, you wouldn't necessarily be able to score that package. And so from a strategy perspective, you're trying to wait as long as possible to recover that minecart and then do your forum run. But you need to leave enough time to go grab that minecart come back into home, most likely reload all those forum things into your mission, into your like robot, run it out to the forum as time expires. Well, you could do those all in one run. That'd be rather complicated, especially if you'd like just miss the minecart or something that screws up the whole run. So if your opponent delays until the last second, then you just straight up can't score the minecart. So you have to, you have to really, really manage time well right at the end because you don't know, is my opponent going to wait until the last second? Because if they do, then like, you do even run the form at that point. It's This is going to be very tense when it comes to state and world level competitions because you're dealing with two teams really trying to communicate with each other. Mission so it's gonna be interesting. Site marking. There's so much yet to be discovered at this dig site. Place flags to mark locations for further study. This is kind of like the reverse of the coral from Submerged. Partly inside and, touching the map, and what's interesting to note is that these these squares are pretty small, but because the flags can just be partly inside, most like it shouldn't be that complicated to do. Um, but it's once again going to be a strategy thing where when do I bring these flags to the right place? Like, do I do it as I'm solving the mission? Do I wait until later? That's going to be really important for teams to try and figure out. And with that, we conclude our tour of the FLL Unearthed Game Board. My thoughts on this game. Firstly, your robot is going to need to be able to be very dexterous. You're going to have to be able to maneuver very small pieces or larger pieces in a tight space. So for that, something like a interchangeable forklift attachment could be nice, where you have a forklift that can have smaller attachments kind of going on the front. That's an option. But obviously, um, I don't actually currently have a mat right now, so I don't know what the optimal way to solve these missions are. It's up to you to decide. Secondly, a robot that can have a lot of different attachments because you have so many different ways of activating things. You've got things that need pushing, things that need removing vertically, things that need move, removing horizontally. You've got a lot of different challenges there. Thirdly, you're gonna need 
amazing game strategy. Game strategy is always a critical part of FLL, but it seems like this year in particular, it's very important. When are you gonna go for that shared mission? When are you going to deposit your pieces in the forum? How are you going to exchange attachments? How are you going to cross over the field? Because there are so many different attachments that you will need to solve these missions. Or you can have one amazing attachment. If you come up with one attachment that can like solve like 90% of the board, that'd be amazing. Please send me a video, I'd love to see it. But it'll seem like, it seems like this board will require a lot of different attachments and customizability options. Well, with that, I think I'm done with the video. Please let me know what you guys think about this board in comparison to previous years, in comparison to what you kind of expected it to be from the uh, reveal trailer. If you want, please go check out my coding tutorials, especially if you are an FLL team that wants to improve your coding game this year. And I leave you with that. Great luck this season.